Hi, I'm Jan Vikowski and I, I work here at Cold Spring Harbour Laboratory. Uh, this is the third day of the 2017 Cold Spring Harbour Symposium on Quantitative Biology. It's the 82nd, so it's uh, had a long tradition. And the topic this year is chromosome structure and segregation. Uh, and I'm delighted to have uh, Daniel Durocher with me uh, from the University of Toronto. Uh, Dan, you, uh, you occupy the place of honour in this meeting, <laughs> yes. wrapping the whole thing up on, on Sunday. Yes, I hope it's a place of honour. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, uh, so as, uh, as I've not heard you speak, obviously, yeah. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about what you're going to be covering in your, in your talk? Yes, so uh, uh, it really is a continuation of our long-standing interest on how cells maintain the stability of the genome. And uh, uh, over the years, we've explored many aspects of it. But uh, uh, with the advent of uh, using CRISPR as a genetic tool to really map out uh, pathways, we, we've recently gone back and essentially revisit, you know, ask the question, do we have all the parts uh, 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 of uh, DNA damage response protein and how uh, can we find new ones. And so we've uh, applied the CRISPR-based uh, technology to, to do this and it's been extremely successful. And, and today, oh, well, tomorrow will be the first time I, I talk about this. Mm. So you, you say you're using CRISPR, which of course yeah. everybody knows is a yeah. very powerful technique. How are you, how are you, use, are you knocking out genes at, at random and seeing the effect on repair? Or what yes, strategy are actually, you using? Yeah, so what we're using is uh, we're using a guide RNA library. So the guide RNA is the little piece of RNA that guides Cas9 to uh, do cuts. Mm -hmm. And we use these libraries in pools uh, uh, in, lentivir in lentivirus. So that allows us to introduce them in cells uh, uh, very effic uh, efficiently. So essentially what we do is we do a population of cells. Each of the cells have a different guide RNA and each of these guide RNA have a different essentially knockout uh, in the gene of interest. And then we subject this population to uh, uh, either DNA damaging agents, uh, uh, in most cases, uh, that's what I'm gonna talk about tomorrow. And then uh, we uh, have a readout uh, what uh, guide RNA causes uh, uh, sensitivity, selective sensitivity to uh, the, the DNA damage in question. So, so that gives us a very unbiased view of the response. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're seeing as, as was, uh, I think, anticipated by the body of work is, is that this is very profound. It, it impacts many aspects of, of cell biology from DNA repair itself to chromatin biology and to the cell cycle. So, uh, uh, you know, for the first time, you are having a, a genetic human uh, view of uh, the response to uh, these DNA damaging agents. And the, the agents use both, both chemistry, chemical and radiation? Exactly. So, so we've used, uh, 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 you know, the, the DNA is, is very susceptible to attack, both from the physical environment, uh, from uh, chemical um, uh, mutagens, but also from the biology. And in fact, uh, uh, because we have enzymes that attack DNA or, or use DNA uh, as well. So we, we're using essentially that whole space uh, for our studies. So we've done radiation, uh, we've done chemicals, and also we've done genetic perturbation that leads to uh, DNA damage also as a tool. Right. And presumably, in a way, you, you have some sort of positive control in the sense that you are presumably picking up genes and proteins that you would expect to do. Exactly, and I think that's, that was what was so exciting when we started doing these, these studies is that we essentially in one fell swoop could rediscover what was known. And, uh, uh, and in addition, we were able to pick up uh, uh, new things mm -hmm. and, uh, and, it, and also pick up things that are really surprising as well. And, and, and the power of the technique is such that uh, you can really believe these results, uh, especially because you've got all the known components right. as well. So. Right. And let's come back to some of these surprising things, or at least what you can yeah. tell us. But uh, presumably, do you pick up different things for different chemical oh, yeah. agents, depending on the, the precise damage that they do? Absolutely, doing? and it's, it's, it's really remarkable. And, and then also, uh, uh, agents, you know, as you would expect, agents that have similar mode of actions uh, uh, essentially will pick up similar genes. Right. And in, in fact, we can uh, even build relationships between agents based on the profiles they're, uh, they're generating. Uh, uh, so in many ways, we could use an agent that is unknown mm. 
put it on cells and by the profile we could say mm. what what type of DNA damage is, is used. Yeah. Well, let me let me pursue that for yes. a moment. Of course, it's been a long ever since the Ames test. Yes. There's been a long-standing desire to have uh, better screens for chemical mutagens. Yes. I mean, could absolutely. Could I think that's one of the objectives that we have, that we have in doing uh, these types of experiments. We can probably develop uh, uh, signatures uh, 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 that will, you know, really tell us what type of, of uh, lesions are generated. And some, in some cases, it's mixed, and we mm. we see this, and we can start deconvolving that as well, which is very exciting. Again, stick, sticking partly with, with this uh, idea of screening for environmental hazards. Yes. Um, this, 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 this is presumably a particularly sensitive way yes. of detecting yep. uh, damaging agents. Yes, absolutely. And I think especially, uh, uh, and also we can modify the system to make it even more sensitive. So we can, uh, 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 we can also partly disable certain genome stability mechanism mm. to make the cell even more mm. sensitive. So I, so I think, you know, this is something we have not yet completely explored, but I think the potential is certainly there uh, uh, to really build uh, maybe probably very sensitive biosensors uh, mm. through this, this, this approach. Yeah. Although one could argue that, because again, it's been a tremendous argument in environmental hazard over the years about how much of a, an environmental hazard is actually dangerous. Yeah, the, whether whether you can't have you know, zero chemical is the only is the only safe level. And sure. I can imagine as you develop ever more sensitive tests, this argument becomes even more uh, contentious. I think that's that's a very good point. I, I uh, uh, but you know from my side, uh, you know we're interested in the genetic architecture yeah. of these responses. Uh, uh, you know. I think doing this is, as, as a readout uh, is an interesting idea. I think it's the interpretation of, of what that readout is eventually might, might be something to, to think about more, yeah. Well, let, well let's get back to the, to the yeah. biology rather than the, the hazards thing. Uh, so you said you've been, you've been picking up, um, you've been getting a surprising yes. results, you've been picking up things yeah. that would not have been, were either not known or would not have been expected yes. to be involved? Yes. Can you give a, a couple of examples? Yes, yeah, so for also? example, we have uh, uh, in one particular DNA damaging uh, uh, condition that affects uh, DNA replication, uh, we find uh, ribosome quality control genes mm -hmm. uh, coming up. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this is very uh, uh, interesting because it suggests there's this crosstalk between uh, translation and, and, and some aspects of, of the quality control pathways that govern uh, 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 DNA replication. And, uh, you know, this is something we're, we're actively working on. So I, we don't really know exactly what is the nature of this crosstalk, but this is something, this is a type of new biology we're hoping to find. Uh, we're also uh, uh, hoping, we're also seeing a uh, number of RNA uh, binding uh, proteins and, and, and involved in, in multiple aspects of gene expression that are coming. And I think that goes in line with uh, this theme that also we're, we're seeing this meeting of chromosome organization, uh, gene expression, and uh, the functional genome mm -hmm. as well. I think that's 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 maybe a little more expected, but this is something uh, you know we'll we'll dig into also. Come, uh, come back to the ribosome thing from so these are these are proteins that are involved in quality control of, of ribosome yes. structural function. At the yes. So these these are uh, involved in the. Uh, 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 rescuing stalled ribosomes when they mm -hmm. encounter uh, either structures or problems mm -hmm. during translation. So essentially it was a pathway that, that uh, leads to uh, 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 its rescue or its degradation or its removal from the, the nascent transcript. Uh, the transcript. And uh, uh, so we're thinking that probably what we're having is aberrant uh, uh, proteins being produced uh, and then these somehow interfere with the interification in this case. So uh, what these proteins are, uh, uh, then it's, 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 it's an active area uh, of study in the lab. Mm. And talking, sort of really come back to the, to the theme of the, of the meeting, and you, you, you touched on it just, yeah. a, just a moment ago, the, the relationship between DNA repair, which I think is being very much just something that happens to a DNA molecule, yes. as opposed to, or in contrast to, the topic of meeting, which is sort of whole chromosome mm -hmm. uh, segregation structure. 
Um, how, do, how does DNA repair well, the, play into overall structural or the other way around? I think there's, there's a very profound uh, interaction between these, these you know, the, the, the quality control of the DNA molecule itself and uh, the overall, both the chromosome organization the, and the chromosome segregation. So just as a quick example, if uh, you're having problem uh, during homologous recombination and you're uh, resulting, and that results with joint, uh, so homologous recombination is this DNA repair process uh, that uh, uses uh, uh, homologous homology on other chromosomes to repair uh, DNA damage. And in the process mm -hmm. of homologous recombination, you create these joint molecules. If these are not resolved in time, they lead to problem in chromosome segregation because the, the chromosome was mm -hmm. physically linked together. So, uh, uh, so there's a number of, of instances where you have this type of feedback. Another feedback is the following that uh, um, how does, so during, for example, the process of homologous recombination, the, the, the damaged DNA needs to find an homologous sequence. How does it search for this homologous sequence in the nuclear environment? Uh, so, 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 so that goes in the kind of another from the whole chromosome to the repair, helping the repair. Mm -hmm. uh, so chromosome organization in that, mm -hmm. that sense also uh, is very uh, useful. And another thing we've uh, been working on also in the past years is the influence of, uh, it, it turns out that a uh, number of DNA repair pathways are actually suppressed during chromosome segregation. And uh, uh, why are we suppressing DNA repair during chromosome segregation? It's, it's maybe to avoid these contacts uh, between uh, uh, chromosomes. Uh, but uh, you know, these are the, the, the type of questions where there's a really nice uh, interplay between chromosome organization structure and DNA right. repair. So there are, there, are, there are processes involved in, in DNA repair that are integral integral to the chromosome dynamics. Yes, and, and for example, the cohesin complex, which is really important to shape the structure of the, the chromosomes and, and also are involved in, in keeping uh, the sister chromatids, the newly replicated uh, sister chromatids together, they play an important role in the DNA repair process as well. So, so you know, it's almost at every uh, stage of, of organization from the unit of the nucleosome to the unit of the, uh, of the chromosome, how it's folded in the nucleus, uh, that there's a really uh, uh, intimate association with mm. the, the DNA repair processes. Right. So, I mean, I guess this is uh, really almost saying I'm a bit naive in thinking that DNA repair is just restricted to mending you know, pyridines and things. Yes, it's, yes. Uh, it's much Yes, much you are bigger. naive in thinking like <laughs> 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 well, I think, I think we'll, I think we'll stop at that point. <laughs> Dan, thank you very much. My pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs>